Good evening, Interworld. Simon Slack here from Banana Bomb Productions. Uh, we're back in Minecraft and we're actually online. Uh, we're on multiplayer Minecraft. This is the Cubecraft server. I'll put the IP in the description and maybe flash it up in the video here. But I think it's just survival.cubecraft.co.uk if you go to your multiplayer settings to join it. And now uh, this is a nice little family friendly server that I joined and I've been playing on here for sort of about 10 hours. But I thought I'd start the video in third person and show off my new skin, which I spent a few hours making the other day so you can see I've got my sergeant insignia on the shoulders there it's got nice little sergeant slack on the front and I've even managed to kind of work my sideburns in but you can't really tell and on the back I've got the banana bomb so I'm pretty pleased with how well this uh, skin turned out it's the first skin I've actually done and I actually used the texture for my camouflage because I'm a sergeant Z like in the army so the texture I used for my camo is actually the British uh, disruptive pattern material. Oh, uh, the, uh, no, zombie, zombie, get away, get away. Yeah. Get out of it. Yeah. Trying to talk. A carrot! There's a carrot! I don't have carrots on this server yet. Awesome. Well done, zombie. Thank you for that. So, back to my skin for a moment. The texture that I actually used is Disruptive Pattern Material 95, which is a British Arms Force, Force is, is Textures Camo. And yeah, I'm quite pleased that I actually managed to work that in and that it actually managed to work. So this is my house. Overall on this server, I've probably played about 20 hours. This part of the build probably only took me about six hours, but this is a survival server. So you've got to do everything from yourself. So I started at spawn, which I will show you in a minute. And I ended up just wandering off pretty much to the edge of the world. I found this little island and I started to build my house. I built my house and then I built my wheat farm over here, which is nearly ready, which I don't have <coughs> permission to use. Uh, so I built my house out here. I built, I started a bit of an orchard because there were no trees here. There was like one over there on that bit. So I did that and then I realized when I wandered over to this part that the, this half of the island was basically owned by someone else. A guy called Hammerhead262. So eventually he popped on and we were on at the same time and we did a bit of a collaborative build. So down here you've got the orchard, you've got all the trees. I've got some jungle wood trees in there. Nice little inweed flood wall and then this entire walk here was hammerhead 262's because he joined on and that that's basically the property limit is this fence and the rest of the island that way was owned by him he planned on building something so we did a bit of a collab and we built this we've got the thing out there and then i built the boathouse let's go have a look at the boathouse but let's take that boat over there that seems to be flying take the flying boat for it's better. So over here on the boathouse, you've got a few containers. Oh, I was actually on the side. A few containers full of boats, which is actually going to become way crazy boatness. Actually going to become uh, on usage things, but I couldn't work out how to put the button. You've got a few more containers out there. At the start of the harbour. We decided we were going to build a big harbour. I was going to build a pirate ship over there in pixel art at some point. And then inside here, just a little bit of design. It's quite nice to build creatively in a survival world and for other people to actually be able to see it. See, doesn't my house look lovely with the sun coming up behind it over there? Ah, you get the full wave in the water. You get the full effect from over here. So we built this harbour on the edge of it. I'll give you a quick tour of the house and then I'll show you my mining base. And there's a lot of things I enjoy about playing on the server that it's different to normal Minecraft. I can't believe it's taken me this long actually to get around to it. So in here, one of the features of it from PVP, you have people, uh, Mr. Me Tiles head, which was gifted to me, Mr. Sajar's head, which was taken from him, and Sam Hunt's head, which was taken from him. Uh, in here, beds, chests, I mean, you can see what I've got up to, a couple of zombie heads, skelly heads, diamonds. I did actually make a load of diamond armor recently, though, and that's where all my diamonds have gone. So I've got a fair whack of materials. So upstairs, continuing the vines from outstairs, outside, we've got a chessboard. So I was maybe going to have a chess game with people on the server at some point. Because that would be quite good. A few paintings. And down here, you see a, a painting. <laughs> to get it, a painting in an item frame. 
But here we have the map of the island. That's the boathouse. That's the harbour with the trees. And then this is where we are right now. So it's quite cool that you could do that with item frames now. I thought I'd incorporate that into the build. And then upstairs we have a nice, nice view of the harbour and the boathouse out there. And then out the back we have my very decadent grass thing. Now I didn't have a silk touch anything to do this i grew this grass up from the ground level over the course of the build of my house which is why you find there's a random strip of grass in here as well because i didn't want to have to go back from the start and do it on again so i'm a little hungry actually Let's eat the bread the bread's quickest so downstairs the final thing i've got to show you is the base the mining base so down here is my mine i've left all the resources on rest and down here we have my mining base so i've got a bit of a farm down here for when it's needed which i still haven't given myself permissions for either uh down there We've got the bedrock, so I thought I'd get down to the bedrock, light it up a bit, have a bit of a glass floor, and yeah, lots of mining has been done on the server. But the good thing about playing on a server and the mining you can do there, let's take this one, because I believe this one goes down to some actually good stuff. Oh, I've been really lucky with enchants as well on this server. I got the best enchanted sword it was like epic for pvp it had like knockback and sharpness and fire aspect on it and i went and did a little bit of pvp in the nether and it fell in the lava and burned so i uh, my second uh, enchanted sword which was this one 30 a level 30 enchantment got me bane of arthropods 4. Ooh, that was so annoying. So I did it again, and I got Bane of Arthropods 4 and, like, looting. Oh, which sucked. So, as you might have guessed... Wait, some lava there. As you might have guessed by the telltale bit of wood in the floor back there, there is, down here, to be found... And I actually came back on myself, didn't I? Yeah. There is down here to be found a whole network of abandoned mine shaft. So I've already been down here for an explore, but the way uh, multiplayer is vastly different from single player is you can come back here and explore, and you're like, oh no, my my bags are all full, and to get back, you set, uh, you simply set your home point which I haven't done. So you can use server commands like back, which takes you back to, oh no, you have to put the chat on. But you can use the server commands, you can come down here for an explore, you can gather up a load of materials and things, and then you can just slash home to get back to your home, which is kind of useful. So, uh, get down. So I'm gonna put the chat on and come back to you guys and show you the sport of Cubecraft. So, as I was saying, one of the good things about playing on a server versus playing non-server is the warp commands and things like that. So, if I'm out exploring and I have to have a full inventory, like I don't really do now, I can just type warp home, and that'll pop me. Uh, that warp does not exist. Yeah, it does. Come on. I could just type home and it'll take me to the spawn, which is wrong, so I can type back to take me back to there. So I don't seem to have a home set in this world, but whatever. Uh, let's do so to get to the spawn you can type warp spawn and then and then Warp spawn. What do you mean that warp doesn't exist? Yeah, it does exist. Have I set something funny in the chat options? Let's just have a look, see. No. So, mm, now where is my home then? Oh, well, home takes me to spawn. So, this is the spawn of the Cubecraft server. You can see the nice seas and seas for Cubecraft. You can see the tables in there. You can see a few people around that seem to be up for a bit of PvPing. And you can see this is a really nice 
castle. It's a nice place to spawn. It shows off the building skills of people on the server quite well. And you've also got tutorials down there to res help, which is how you save your things and stop people from grieving. And then there is a way out. So let's follow the way out and it may well eventually learn so you come outside you've been in a massive castle they've got some of the beacons in there i need to eat up I'm going to eat some bread and hopefully this will all load so you've got this nice big walk down which is quite nice because when you're in spawn you don't suffer from uh, the usual things like food killing you lack of food because the server is set to hard mode so you will starve to death and the thing is though by the time you've figured out where you are and walked out of spawn you're generally on like low hunger anyway and then you get down there so we've got a bit of a town here and there is actually in the town somewhere there is a marketplace but i'm not quite sure where that is so, Appearing wall. Oh, come on, Minecraft. Stop being that. So let's just try uh, one of the warp points that's been set. It's market. So I can not warp to the market when I take that. That's right. Warp market. So there we go. We have a market here. We have a, a list full of rules and all kinds of groovy things. Uh, you've got some enchanting and weapons and things. There is a tower somewhere with enchanting. And the marketplace around here, you could buy materials. They're quite costly and you have to donate to the server for a few days to be able to afford stuff. But you can buy those hard to get hold of things like carrots. I can't believe that zombie dropped a carrot. I don't know if you can actually buy carrots here. So around the inside, you've got a lot of building materials uh, you can buy them from, buy stacks of them, but you can actually sell things as well. So the best way to get money on the server is to actually get some sheep together, sell your wool back to the server, and you make some money that you can then spend on the server. And a nice little fountain in the middle as well. So around the outside, there's fun things that you can buy and sell, things that you can grow... Uh, stony blocks all those kind of things overall this server is quite fun it's a family standard server so there are quite a lot of kids and there seems to be quite a big uh, sort of Australian population weirdly or maybe it's just that the time that I play there are usually a lot of Australians about who knows so in here you've got general things general cool things so uh, this is Sergeant Slack from Banana One Productions saying thanks very much for taking a tour of my Minecraft world on the Cubecraft server with me. Unfortunately, I probably won't be playing too much more often on here as I've been invited to join another server somewhere else and that will be what the next episode is about. So, thanks for watching. Um, comment, like, subscribe if you did and I will catch you next time. Cue the montage.